Thanks for watching Double Tap here on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. In this video, we're joined by Red Sail and Ramya Ambuthan, and we asked the burning question, is there a downside to using synthetic voices? You're watching Double Tap TV. We're back on the show with Ramya and Red. Now, guys, I want you to take a listen to this clip of audio. Sometimes we're inspired by a quote that we didn't even know came from a book. I've heard not all those who wander are lost countless times, but never knew it was from a beloved fantasy series. Okay, so would you have known that that was an AI, that that was a robot? Ramia? Uh, not necessarily, only because, I mean, I would only because I'm listening to synth audio all the time and picking up on little, little things like inflection, pronunciation, and breath. Breath is a big one. Hmm. Okay. Red, any thoughts? Yeah, likewise. Um, the, the the intonation, I don't know, it could be an accent, it could be synth. Um, yeah, the breath is always a, a, a dead giveaway. Dead um, giveaway. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not altogether sure I'd ask them out for a drink. <laughs> so, so <laughs> here's a question for you guys, which is, you know, aside from, you know, voice actors losing some pretty big gigs, what are the downsides of computers sounding more human? Red? Um, I think we lose something by, by and everything just being that little bit too accurate, that little bit too polished. I, yeah, it might wind me up every so often when I hear a word being pronounced completely wrong. I, there was a narrator recently who went through an entire Second World War book saying Luftwaffe rather than Luftwaffe. But, you know, I, that, that actually added to to the whole flavour of the book and made me think, oh, bless, they're quite a young narrator. They, you know, they're, they're a lot a lot further removed from the Second World War than I am. Um, yeah, I think we just lose a little bit of, of personality. It's funny you say that. It flashes back to an episode of Star Trek. I don't know why this came to my mind, but on Star Trek The Next Generation, there was Data, the android. And I remember he was learning to play the violin and every single time he played it, it was identical. And the reaction was actually not very positive because there was no room for error. That margin of error lacked that human element of it. And I think that's kind of what you're getting at, right, Ramya? Yeah, it honestly, it, it removes you a little bit from the experience. So I, I find that reading older books and hearing that production of like, wow, this was recorded at the CNIB in you know, 1982, and then they put it in this uh, app, and now it sounds like, this I'm I love getting that uh, I'm with the narrator to a point, even with the newer stuff. Right. Even with the really great quality productions that I get all over Audible, I still feel like I'm with the narrator. But when you synthesize, you, you can get it to as close as human as possible. But you do feel like it's. It's not you're not fully there with them because they're not real. Um, and that's that's an aspect. It's kind of the same thing with music, you know, listening to live performances or listening to people uh, do their thing. The music coming out of them compared to like the computer playing the keyboard for me. Yeah, I love hearing the page turn as the narrator goes on yes. the next page. And actually some of those old recordings from the 50s, you can hear them sort of slurping away at a cup of tea or a glass I of know. wine. And so it's... Clearing their throat. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Yeah, do you know, I think we're in a bit of a moment in time here because we are talking about this as, you know, as something new. And I think in a few months and even a few years' time, we'll be talking about this as just part of every day. I think we'll we'll see the benefits come along. And I think the biggest benefit for me will be the ability to choose the voice that I'm listening to. And I think that's actually quite powerful. In terms of the personality, though, I agree with you, Ramia. There's something, there's some, there's a depth to an audiobook when a real person's behind it, whereas it doesn't feel that way. I guess it's like music. You know, I think if you listen to classical music being played by an orchestra, you know, versus listening to something that's been made by a DJ on his laptop, it is quite different. You know, there's a there's a difference in depth to it, and you can feel it. You actually do feel it through the music or through the book or whatever it is. So, you know, I certainly hope they don't ever move away entirely from it. I know you guys wouldn't. I, I do have one question, though, to throw to both of you before we go, and that is, if you both could go back to regular print, would you pick up a book now, or would you stay with audiobooks? Ramia. This is a good one. I'm learning Braille at the moment because I want to have 
options. I just love uh, widening the horizon for me on how I read. Uh, and that's from synthetic audio to human narration to ebooks to um, Braille. Back in when I could read print, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed curling up uh, with a physical book in, and flipping the pages myself. So that's why I'm, I've taken up Braille. But I don't think I would leave audiobooks because that brings me to a nice cozy spot too in a totally different way but it's what red you were saying earlier it's that feeling of like being a kid again and somebody telling you a story that's so comforting i agree i don't think i could ever turn away from audiobooks they give me far too much pleasure but like ramia and and i think like you stephen i'm learning braille and it's reminded me firstly how much i value reading in silence because it's about the only silent thing I get to do. Yes. And and, and secondly, yeah. there's something sacramental about picking up a book and opening it and diving into it quietly and creating the, the voices in your own head. You know, guys, I think we're going to be having this conversation for quite some time, and there's so many, so many use cases that I can think of where using a synthetic voice has a major advantage. Think of audio description, being able to choose the accent, the language, on demand and get access to that stuff quicker than they're even released. That's just one use case that I could think of. But uh, thank you so much for taking the time to join us, Ramia and Red. We cannot wait to have you on again. Maybe talk about Braille next time. Mm-hmm. When I'm a little better. It's an absolute pleasure. Nice to play with the other children for a bit. <laughs> Absolutely, Red. Well, listen, thank you so much, both of you, uh, to Mark Flalo as well. Uh, that's it for our show this week. Join us next time. Thanks for watching Double Tap. Send us your feedback to feedback at doubletaponair.com. Leave us a voicemail at 1-877-803-4567. Thanks for watching this Double Tap video. Again, if you're not already subscribed to our channel, hit that subscribe button and don't forget the notification bell. It will help you get notified when we've got a brand new video just like this to share with you.